Tip It Channel, everyone. Hope you guys are having a great rest of your day, start to your day. Whatever time it may be, man, we're starting off the video inside of the car the way it should be. We got a little bit of rain here, but that is not going to stop us. Now, ironically, having a little bit of rain isn't that big of a deal because we are just gonna be having a little bit of a discussion here. We're gonna be talking about... Gotta be very, very careful with these Texas drivers. We're gonna be talking about the top five best performance modifications you guys should do to your 2016 to 2020 Shelby GT350s if you are looking to modify these cars. Now I know a lot of owners that have these cars don't really modify them. You honestly don't need to modify them. These cars are perfectly fine in the stock form. They're incredibly fun. They're also pretty stout, believe it or not. I know people like to underrate these cars just because they don't have a 10 speed strap to them, but these cars in the stock form are actually very, very potent. this car for a little bit over a month I've gotten some work done to it and I pretty much tested a tried and true setup that I believe is the best bang for your buck here now that's very important because obviously when modifying a vehicle you want to spend the least amount of money and preferably the least amount of parts on the car for it to run the way you want it to run or at least how it should now, the first modification you guys should definitely do to a Shelby GT350 if you are going to be going the performance route is getting a set, Jesus, it's starting to rain, is getting a set of long tube headers. Now, it can be catless, it can be high flow cats, it doesn't matter. The pickup is going to be pretty much irrelevant. Catless versus high flow cats. I'm gonna be putting the long tube headers that I do have on the car right now. I have Stainless Works long tube headers. These are catless Stainless Works long tube headers, but a catted setup, you're looking at five horsepower less. It's literally irrelevant. You'll pick up more performance wise if you were to go ahead and do a rear seat delete. Seriously, five horsepower is irrelevant because these cars are top end monsters already. Now, the long tube headers are going to completely, and I'm telling you guys this right now, completely unlock the potential of the 5.2. The top end, the torque is going to be significantly increased, which is a good thing because these cars do lack in the torque department. But up top, these cars are straight monsters when you set them up properly. And you don't even have to do a lot to set these cars up properly, believe it or not. Now, what you also want to do after getting a set of long tube headers, let me go ahead and slow down right here. I don't like the way this hump is because you can bottom out. There we go. Now, what you want to do after getting a set of long tube headers, which I believe is pretty much common sense, is you want to get the car tuned because the headers are going to be completely irrelevant without a tune. Now, if you can, if you have the fueling in your area, I highly, and I mean, I highly recommend you guys getting this cartoon on E85. A simple headers and E85 combo in a Shelby GT350 with a competent driver is a lot of fun and you will be able to outrun and keep up with a lot of cars that I can guarantee you, you would not believe you can keep up with. Now, just to put this into perspective, a simple headers in E85 GT350 can keep up with a stock-ish Hellcat. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put, I gotta go ahead and clean my wipers. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a video clip on the screen right now for you guys of me running up against a stock Hellcat so you guys can see exactly what this car is capable of. saw with a simple headers and e combo you can actually keep up and start pulling on a stock ish hellcat which i think is actually pretty cool now i know a lot of people like to consider it cringe people keeping you know hellcats in their mouths people going ahead and comparing everything to hellcats but 
The Hellcat is a good benchmark of speed because it is one of the higher horsepower cars you can get from factory that are automatic. Obviously, we have a six-speed transmission, so the fact that we can keep up and pull on a car like that with just a headers and e-combo is actually pretty amazing, and I think that's worth the modifications done to the car by itself. I mean, being able to outrun an Hellcat with just headers e-combo, that's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> That's nuts. So definitely recommend you guys going ahead and doing that as soon as possible. Now, with great power comes great responsibility. And once you guys do a headers and e-combo, you're gonna have to go ahead and upgrade your tires, man. Now, this also kind of ties into a lot of owners. I know keep these cars stock and if you were looking for a Shelby GT350 because it is a Shelby car there is a high chance that your car has low miles and has the original Michelin tires on it now when I actually did get my car my car has 13,000 miles on it right now I bought my car when it had 10,800 I still had the original Michelin Pilot Super Sports, not the Pilot Sport 4Ss that are on, you know, the PP1 10-speed Mustangs. These are the first-generation Pilot Super Sports, which are vastly inferior to the Pilot Sport 4Ss. They're not even close to how good those tires are. You will be able to blow the tires off from a 40, a 50, and a 60 roll with an headers E combination on a 350 if you do have those stock tires. So I recommend you guys going ahead and upgrading those almost immediately. Honestly, I'd probably do it all at the same time just so you don't have to worry about spinning because obviously spinning the tires, I'm not gonna lie, it is cool the first couple times, but it is a safety hazard. You don't wanna be running off the road, you don't wanna get into an accident, and you don't wanna have the car uncontrollable because the Shelby GT350, the whole purpose of buying a car like this is to have like an all-around platform that is controllable no matter what you're doing. Tracking, straight line, it could do it all, quite literally, again, if you have a competent driver behind the wheel, but you definitely wanna have your tires upgraded. Now, I have Mickey Thompson ET Street SS tires 19s the same exact spec that you would get on the pilot super sports 305 35 19s they match up no rubbing no issues i will go ahead and park the car and show you guys exactly what i'm talking about these tires are amazing now i'm going to say this in this video too i know a lot of people love the toyo r triple eight r's but in my personal opinion, from my experience, because I've actually had Toyo R888Rs, not on this car, but my other car that I still currently have, I have those tires on that car. The Mickey Thompson ET Street SSs are a far better tire. Hot, cold, in the rain, I'd rather drive on Mickey Thompson ET Street SSs all day. Now, you guys can also tell, with the Mickey Thompsons, there is no road noise. It's completely quiet. As you guys saw in the video clip of me racing the Hellcat, it is completely quiet when going 120 plus miles an hour. Now, you cannot say the same thing with the Toyo R888Rs. They have wicked road noise. It does sound cool, but at the same time, there are better tires that don't have that. And the tread life on the R888 R's is next to none. You're gonna get maybe 3,000 miles out of them. It really isn't even worth going ahead and putting those tires on your car. There are far better options. Mickey Thompson ET Street SS's. I daily drove Mickey Thompson ET Street SS's on my last Mustang. Not daily driving this car, obviously, but you can definitely expect to get, I'd honestly say 5K miles at least out of these tires if you're not you know driving like a madman 24 7 and if you have a gtd 50 you're probably not driving like a madman 24 7 and you're also probably not daily driving your car so i recommend you guys going ahead and getting these tires over the r triple eight r's i know a lot of people like to recommend those but mickey thompson is a far better tire and compound they don't look as cool but at the same time we're talking about performance oriented modifications things that work that's important here man because you can't have it all you can't have looks and performance sometimes and the mickey thompson's definitely are some damn good tires so recommend you guys going ahead and getting that now as far as additional supporting mods when going ahead 
and doing modifications to this car. If you are up for it, I do recommend you guys upgrading your clutch immediately as well. Now, soon after I did the headers E combo on this car, my clutch started to slip. <laughs> with buying a bone stock car and starting to modify it is because the clutch is going to see a lot more shock from torque instantly after you guys go ahead and up the horsepower because it's going to be a significant increase that is what's going to start breaking things now the previous owner that had this car it was a lady i'm not too sure if she tracked this vehicle from my just experience i do believe she did track it just a little bit because like I said, as soon as I did the header Z combination, this car did start to experience pretty significant clutch slip. And I am in the process of actually looking for a replacement. Now I actually am gonna go ahead and put a screenshot of the replacement clutch that I am thinking about going ahead and getting. Um, it is gonna be the McLeod um, RXT 1200 clutch. I've heard good things about this clutch. I haven't heard a lot of good things about the 1000 clutch. Now the thing about clutches here is you want to make sure you have a clutch that can support more horsepower than what you think you're going to be pushing long term. Now I do intend on boosting this car, so obviously being around let's say 850 wheel horsepower, I want to have a clutch that can support 1200 just so I can have enough leeway room so I don't have to go ahead and do it again because these clutches on these cars are not cheap at all if you're not doing the labor yourself the labor for these are not cheap the last thing you want to do is install a clutch and have it fail a couple months later and have to do it all over again which is what I plan on not having to have happen so I do recommend you guys going ahead and looking up a clutch that will be able to support your needs after going ahead and modifying it if you're going to stay in a or plan on going boosted like I am. Let me know down in the comment section what clutch you guys have in your car as well as if you guys have experienced clutch, clutch slip, clutch, I can't even speak right now, clutch slip after going ahead and modifying your Shelby GT350 um, maybe after getting it from somebody who may have kept it stock for a majority of its life like I did. And the last modification I recommend you guys getting is a JLT cold air intake. This coupled with the headers and E85 combo is gonna allow the 5.2 to, to breathe up top and become an absolute monster. You guys can see the headers down there a little bit. This combo is nasty. And the best part about it, it is cost effective. So. If you guys looking to modify your GTD50, definitely go ahead and do these modifications. Headers, E85, JLT, tires, and a clutch. You'd be good to go as far as NA goes. And for those of you who are wondering about the fitment with the Mickey Thompson ET Street SS tires, this is what we're looking like, man. As you guys can see here, absolutely no rubbing. It is going to be the stock sizing as you guys can see we have 305 35 19s and i think it looks pretty aggressive the only thing you have to worry about is obviously the rear bumper getting dirty because it is technically a radial but boy does it work this car hooks and books and it is nasty A little quick walk around appearance wise my car is stock haven't done anything straight under the engine into the tires but i think everything looks pretty damn good man let me know down in the comment section what y'all think pretty cost effective simple setup that puts in work so if you guys do enjoy the video because it is getting kind of windy outside and it's probably gonna start raining again make sure you guys drop a like on the vid subscribe to the channel turn those post notifications these are gonna be in my personal opinion and i think i got the videos to back it up 
the top five best mods you can do to a Shelby G350 if you're looking to get your feet wet. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one, man. Deuce.